Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. And you can tell them how much better we're doing. Yeah. But it works. Exactly. For 25 years. It's like, come on. We've so he sees through some of those things. Why things are not a certain way. You know? All right, people. Have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> now you catch that door yeah. for me. Hi, Dave. Hey. Hello. So Ben and Marianne are. Yeah. Amy and Marianne are coming. I don't know where Linda is. Linda's always late. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Linda's always yeah. late. Linda's Linda. And Judy and Claire. I don't know where they are. Okay. Yeah, I know these. I'm okay. here. Okay. 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 Well, I see, but okay. I need to concentrate Let's too much. <laughs> okay, mine are probably too strong for you because I have two pairs. Father, I just thank you so much for this morning. I thank you. I thank you for the privilege just of opening your word and for Holy Spirit just teaching us through your word when it's <coughs> such a difficult subject. Father, I pray for Louise as I know she doesn't want to be home, but it's so hard for oh, her to Louise. sit. Just pray that you would minister to her while she's at home. Oh, thank you for that. Um, I just pray that you would guard our words on this difficult subject of false prophets this morning, that we would encourage one another with your word. In your precious name we pray, amen. Um, first question is, thank you. we have two more strong. weeks um, in Second Peter. Do we go on to uh, Colossians and Philemon, or do we say, bye, have a good summer? I won't be here for that part, because we're probably going to be gone a good portion of this. So that's months, one out. So. I'll be here. You'll be here? I'll be here. No, here. I'm here. gone. Summer? Summer? No, no, no. we'll start, um, we'll be done by May. Oh, yeah. Here. Okay. Yeah, please keep going. Keep going? Okay, so... Well, it's Part of that's up to you too, Jenny, because you're <laughs> the one that has to do you? all the yeah. <laughs> cream preparation. Well, I never want to waste time. Yeah. That's you know, I'm like, if I got time to study, I want to study. Yes. So please, yes. Yes. Okay. What all right. I'll order school? about 15 <laughs> books then. Okay. I'll tell Barbie to do that. That's so I will say I like the. I'm sorry. This what study eight? is that? Yeah. Is that nice? I can say, okay, eight weeks. I can make sure I do that. Yeah. Right. And Roman, or what, what, Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> Revelation. <laughs> yeah, two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah, that was a little. Um, Colossians and Philemon are a nine-week commitment. I think one is six and one is three, something like that. No, so if you need to, the summer, then yeah, summer. and then that'll that'll Which break us. Which one you choose, honey? Uh, we'll be up by May 16th. Both of them. Okay. Yeah, it would be two. So, it would be both. I need those tapes then too. So. Okay. When you order yours. Now, this was just such a happy subject, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I was just like really hard. Um, I can't say that I would leave study and go, that was encouraging. <laughs> and you know, I was, I was telling Marjorie, I know this world has gotten really, really wicked. Um, God had to give me a visual <clears throat> Friday night, Ron won tickets to Jazzes for Lovers at the Dr. Phillips Center. So we had a wonderful dinner. We walked over to there and we got into a little thing. And a lesbian couple sat right in front of us. And we're all over each other. I was like, Lord, first I got mad. Then I got really disgusted. Mm -hmm. And then I had this great pain. I thought, thank you, Lord, that, that mercy is coming in because Satan has so deceived them mm -hmm. that they think their evil now has to be forced on me and I have to accept it, but I don't. But they think that they do. And they think now the world is going to say, this is okay. But God's word said it's not. So it's not. Another evil deception he has blinded and they are going straight to hell and will not believe you at all mm -hmm. because that infringes on their freedom. Mm -hmm. And that like, makes wow. me sad. That's the thing. I that makes really me so sad. sad. I'm like, I feel sad see. for them. The only joy they're going to have that it, they have is right now. Couple of seconds in here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it really joy? And is it? Yeah. I have someone on Tuesday. I was at my mom's group and they decided to do a hot topic. It was mostly on racism, but then they also were talking about some of the other stuff and everything. 
and it's mostly like it's all it's a Christian group there's all different denominations different ideas or whatever but it's a lot of women that I know that have very good hearts and everything and they were talking about racism and there's one black lady you know that was talking and everything about how you know that we have colorblinds wrong and as in the discussion it went as far as saying that we're not supposed to teach our kids that you know God created us all human we're all equal because we all have different paths and they've gone through so much more than we have and we need to and by saying that they're equal to us, that's saying that we didn't, that we're, we're just diminishing their past that they haven't been through this. Wow. And I'm going, like, these are, and this is a Christian group, and this lady yeah. is a great Christian lady that's saying this is black lady, but that's what she's been taught because they've gone through so much. So by saying we're colorblind, you know, I'm going, no, I'm going to raise my color kid colorblind in the fact that we are all equal. We are. Everyone's had that past. Well, I, I mean, so. I'm not diminishing her. She's probably had a rough past. She might have dealt with racism and all kinds of stuff, but there's, like, other people who've had other issues. But in, but the thing that's me is all these women in there, they're well-intentioned women, and then it got into other stuff. And they're all people that believe that, and most of them, they believe that we should have gay marriages and stuff because it's we're all supposed to be about love, and it's all about this. And it was doing this was, I was in tears because I'm going, mm -hmm. so these people, they really are doing it out of a kind heart. They really do want, they are, they, their they intentions they're doing are well. Those, right. yeah. yeah, but then I'm reading all this horrible stuff about them, and I was having trouble putting it together. I mean, it's one thing, those that are leading, and there are people right. that are leading that that are purposely trying to cause destruction and everything. Right, right. But then there's all those people like this well, good Christian lady that's teaching that we shouldn't yeah. teach color blind because it doesn't matter that God created us all. And today. people are following her. Because that I know, sounds but good. She's doing yeah. it from the right mind. And I mean, her, I, know she, I know her heart. I know her well. I know she's this really sweet woman that really does care about people. But, like, I, that was, it was really, I had problems with that. Like, when I see some gay couple I don't know, I can easily assume things or whatever, but right? When but it's somebody, deep and personal. But when it's somebody I know, and I know they're doing it out of yeah. the kindness of their heart, but extremely wrong mm -hmm. motives. And then I'm reading all this stuff and having trouble putting it together that, like, they're not evil heart. Right. They're not purposely trying to do that, although they are leading right. down the path. But, but now, so. Shannon, what now that you have come in contact with her and are in this group, and I'm assuming you have a relationship with her, is it now your responsibility to bring? I know, and that's her. Right. Well, so I didn't yes. say anything to you today because it was, I mean, there's like 40 ladies there and the big discussion, and they don't know. Most of them don't know me too well because I've only been here a year, so I knew that it wouldn't be taken right if I said anything. But like the one lady, I'm going to one day, but that was also struggling with that because you got to be careful how you say it. And they don't oh, know yeah. you. They're going to so assume absolutely. that you're this evil racist person, and, you and know, you have like, to have a relationship relationship before you start yeah. because and otherwise exactly. they're just going to kick you off. Exactly. So yeah. I, for two it's, hours I sat yeah. there holding my mouth, biting my yeah, tongue, no, and they're yeah. saying all this stuff, and yeah. I'm like, if we had so good intentions. First good friend, intentions, and then start, yeah. yeah. So it's lit. I mean, I'm like, no, God, you're just totally. like cool. Then the thing is, though, that people will follow, yes. Yes. and then these mops moms that are usually young in their faith mm -hmm. will adopt know. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was all about how to teach our kids. The whole entire thing was about how to teach our kids about racism. And it so started racism and got another into other sexuality yeah. stuff, too. But now but you're bringing up another generation that's But then that's you're bringing up a generation right. that's, you know, yeah. False well, doctrine. The Christian community. Uh-huh. That's yeah. a subtlety that creeps in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not subtle. It looks good, feels good, it's sounds good. It's good. Sounds good. good. What God means. Yep. Yep. And it is it. Being a guy. Being a guy. Conversation one time, where somebody <coughs> put this this subtlety and then slightly off into military terms. <coughs> he said, talk about the fact that you use artillery. And you have to have to gauge it, and aim it, and you know, all the degrees and things off. He said, if you're off just a slight amount here when you fire it, you miss the target miss so much. When it hits, and that's it. So therefore, as you subtlety creeps in, and you're firing mm -hmm. this to this generation, next generation, it just goes on and on, yeah. on and on and on. It gets further and further away. I will pray for an opening yeah. for you. Yeah. That, will be, so that will be that will be like boom, and something. they'll go, oh now. Well, so the same lady I was in a conversation with last week, and it was just like three or four of us that knew each other, and she was talking because she's a very dark black, and she was talking about how like. She's been treated horrible by the black community because being a light back is better, and how hard it is being black because she's dealt with in the black community and dealt with oh good reasons for life. So yes, well, so I thought of the fact that I was made fun of my whole life for being white because I'm like ghost white. This is tan for me. Like this is really tan for me. Like, so when I was in, I was in middle school, kids would run into me, other white.
kids would run into me and would say, oh, I didn't see you, you're a ghost. And I would be made fun of in pictures, because I literally in pictures, like, I radiate. I'm not kidding. When the sun hits my skin, it like warms. I'm not kidding. It really does. But, like, honestly, it never bothered me. I, I grew up, like, people would say stuff that I was called leche in high school, because I was white as milk. I mean, like... But it never really, I, I would laugh along with it. What are you going to do? I mean, what are you going to do? It's like, like what whatever. Exactly. Thing. So when she was doing that, I, I brought up, I was like, yeah, I've had that. I'm, I'm sure to a lesser extent, but I've had that. And, you know, told some stories. People make fun of me. You don't understand. It's different. Being black, you know, it didn't affect what you could be in life and what you can do and blah, blah, blah. And you just don't understand. And, you so know, like, suddenly, like, scared. label racist right there. It's like, oh, yeah. like, yeah. hell, It's a different kind of review here just a little bit because I haven't reviewed in a couple weeks. So I always want you to go, yes, I know why Second Peter was written. Why was it written? Time was short. Is one of the reasons. Or Good. Urge him to remember. He knows who's going to die. Encourage him to remember. Okay. Turn him up. Because I can get pretty comfortable. Because yes. there are false teachers. There are right false now. teachers. Okay. Um, right now, among you. Right now. Um, among, yeah. Oh, no, no, they're out there. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. Here, right here. They're right here. And I can imagine these people reading it going, hmm? is it you? Are you a false teacher? Okay, we listen to this, this, and this, and he brings the word in. Is he? And that's exactly what he wanted to stir them up to. Okay, I'm glad you like this guy. Is he a false teacher, or is he totally preaching straight the word, or is he putting a little false in there? Okay? He wanted to go, listen up. And they didn't have the Bible. To and they go didn't and have check. the word. No, nope. that's it. They relied on their leaders even more than we do. Yeah. Okay? Be on your guard. Grow in grace and knowledge of Christ. Well, that's in the very last chapter, almost the very last verses of his letter. Okay? Second Peter 1 was so that you know how to live a pure life and not stumble. Why do you think he starts with that? Since you spent so much time mm -hmm. in the second right. chapter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> do the positive yeah. first. Right, <laughs> do the positive first. Remember who you are. Remember who you were. What's the, don't stumble. <coughs> All this list of qualities, mm -hmm. great. Okay, so that's not supposed to only be in me, that's also supposed to be in the leader I'm listening to. Okay. 2 Peter 2, 1 to 3, which you could probably quote by now. I wish. But false prophets also arose among the people. Who were the people? Right. Okay. Just as there will also be false teachers among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're finding out what false prophets are, and you got Old Testament, you got <laughs> New Testament, you got more than I ever wanted to know, right. <laughs> okay, it's like, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Yeah. Are the odds really that What great? are yeah, she right? That's what I felt like. like. Right. Lordy. Yeah. First of all, we know yeah. they're among the people. So you're not gonna have to look too far, which makes me really take a couple steps back. Mm -hmm. And think it's scary. It's scary. Yeah. And what I think might have been good mm. might might not have been good. Reproof me, Lord. Reproof yes. Me and tune my ears. Wow, don't tickle them. Make them burn when something is not right. Some so of I can go, so wow. Yeah. Some of it sounds so, doesn't it? Yeah, and it fools you. Yes. I mean, like prosperity gospel, they include everything. You know, not just money. No, they, they include, include everything. everything. And God wants a good life for us. But he doesn't promise a rose garden. No, he does not. And he doesn't promise that <coughs> everything you have will be gifted to you. That's huge, too. You know, you went to Deuteronomy 18. This was talking about Christ. Do you remember that Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. They already got it in Exodus. Now, where is Deuteronomy in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy? So that's intended to. What's happening in Deuteronomy? 
Anybody know? Because he got the law in Exodus, gave it to him, and now he's giving it to him again in Deuteronomy. Why? Deuteronomy, oh, he also gives the specifics on the tabernacle. Good. <coughs> uh, I, I think Exodus does that as it well. Does, they but build, that Deuteronomy right. then gives the, yeah. And it's almost a recap of what they did and where they went through and how God gave the law. And what, why do we have to redo that? Deuteronomy actually was founded mm -hmm. on the Ten Commandments because he gave him the Ten Commandments, but then, good glory, you get to chapter 33, I think it is. Mm. Expound. Holy No cow. Reader's Digest version there. No. Uh -oh. this, right, this, Larry, this, to oh, remind. Yes. To re what are they about to do? Go into the Go promised, into land. promised land. What's Moses about to do? Die. See you. Yeah. Bye. And Moses alive. And not right, only Joshua right. and Caleb and Moses. Yeah, this is the That's it. Group. So the rest of them the die. <laughs> right? We learned about the women might still be there because they weren't counted as Oh uh, Yeah, see, right? <laughs> so I'm just like, Moses is about to die. Does he have a sense of urgency? Mm -hmm. He's releasing these people he's been with for 40 years, walking in the desert, watching them die, 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 die. die. After 40 years, they're all dead, except for jo Joshua and Caleb who gave back a good report, and now he knows he can't go in, but they're ready to go in. So he's handing over the baton to Joshua. Joshua. Aaron went in too, though. Aaron died? Did Aaron die? Mm -hmm. That's not Aaron was dead. I can't remember where he, when he died. Now, Joshua opens up with, Moses, my servant, is dead. Uh -huh. Dumb. <laughs> I think we all know that. It's almost like God saying, Moses is dead. Yeah. You're the guy. Do this. Don't be afraid. I will be with you wherever you go. Yeah, but Moses, yeah, no, my, Moses, my servant, is dead. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm the guy. You're the guy. I chose you. You've been underneath Moses for 40 years. You're good to go. <laughs> Take it back to Peter. <coughs> He's about to die. Here it comes. God's told me I'm about to die. This is my last chance to tell you, don't forget, stir up, and there will be false prophets. And let me tell you how to notice them. <laughs> that was helpful. Oh, yeah. OK? All those things seem to be blatant. Well, most of them did. Because when you read in the first three verses, secretly mm -hmm. introduced destructive heresies. Secretly, OK? <clears throat> In Deuteronomy, we, it said, I will raise up a prophet from among you. Where are all the false prophets? Among, among, among you. you. Right. <coughs> yeah. I will put that's my good. words in oh, his oh, mouth. Yeah. Well, that's Christ. That's what he means. They're right here. Don't forget. Okay? So if one didn't listen to God's words, this is really important because we can really apply this to Second Peter. Okay? God would require it of him. It. What's the it refer back to? It's got to be God's words because it said if you do not listen to God's words, God would require it. God's words of him. So you've heard. Dangerous. You've heard. Now you've made a choice. The inductive study is so different than any other kind of study. Because instead of going to Sunday school and they say, what do you think it says here? How many times have I heard that yeah. in my life? Well, or the teacher saying, well, this is what I think. Right. Inductive well, this is what the commentary is, that I read said. Mm -hmm. This, this inductive that. is, what do you know? What does and, and why do you know it? Exactly. Well, because God's Word said it. Uh, it's obvious. I'm not trying to make it obscure. I'm just right. telling you I've observed it, and this is what it said, and I can't make it say something else. No. And it's precept upon precept little, upon precept. Yeah. Yes. Because if You're you don't add little. that, right. yeah. you can get false things yes, out of it. Yes, and take it out of context. Yes. Which and is I what think that's what... Knowledge is so much... It just lifts me up. Yes. It, instead of putting the pressure on me, like, well, what do you think? Yeah, I think God's word says, and this is my opinion about it. <clears throat> this is what I know. This is what God's word says, so it doesn't change. Right. Okay? What about the false prophet? 
Hmm. Why do you say don't be afraid of him? Why should you be? Why would people be afraid of false prophets? Because sometimes they're don't. saying things to scare them on purpose. Okay. And what do we know that they in can our have? society, I think they're scary because they're leading our society right. astray. I mean, right. it's yeah. like I look at it and look at the stuff that was going on this week and stuff and think, right. how in the world is God going to correct this or are we just going to yeah. destruction? And if you like stand happen, up you against it, and you're going to be yeah. just, mm -hmm. And you remember, further on, it, we, it said they had great signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. right. It's not that they didn't happen. Right. Oh, they happened. Mm -hmm. Right before their eyes. Just great right. signs and wonders. Because that in that passage, they weren't called false. Mm -hmm. They were called great signs and wonders. So you're like, well, how do I explain that? And I'm scared for my kids. <laughs> in the world that they're living in. Satan is very strong. He He's can do very lots of strong. things. strong. Absolutely he can. Ask them what they say about me. God says. There you what go. They say and that will tell you. Yeah. That yeah. narrows it down. Yeah. I think we're told not to be afraid because our faith is supposed to be uh, Mm -hmm. Our faith is great. Yeah. Our faith in God is great. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Yeah. And God has overall plan. Yeah. 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 And we are in his hand. Now, I went to hear uh, Eric Metaxas at First Presbyterian Sunday night. And he was talking about Bonhoeffer. So what does Bonhoeffer have to do with me now? It has everything to do with me now. Bonhoeffer was in the German hierarchy. His father and his brothers and sisters were geniuses. He came from a family of geniuses. His father was the head psychologist in Germany, which is why Bonhoeffer got a lot away with a lot of stuff he did. Yeah. Bonhoeffer died young because he stood up for what was right in Nazism. One little kid, I say little kid, he was 14. They had a great way to text in questions. Text in questions. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Here's the number. Text in your question. So you can sit there and be totally anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> and you could ask a stupid question and nobody will know you were the one asking the stupid question. <laughs> right? That's where my head goes first. Sorry. <laughs> Lots of people are all very brilliant. <laughs> 14 year old kid says, Well, how can I be a Bonhoeffer in my world today? Oh. Wow. Eric says, You can't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Brilliant. Mm -hmm. God did not call you to be a bond offer, he said. God called you to make a difference where you are with the people in your sphere of influence. At 14, you are called to obey what you know in every day. That's what you're called to do. That's all bond offer did. I heard somebody say in the Bible, all the heroes, none of them dreamed of being something big. No. They, none of them had dreams. They just had, had a heart for God and wanted to obey him. I mean, all 12 disciples were out doing menial things when they got called. They weren't, that right? They're fishing. Thing. They weren't trying yeah. to be some big no. world changer. No. But they changed the world, you know. Right. And nothing that they did, it's God chose. That's it. When you looked in Deuteronomy 13, okay, you are on page 49 of your homework. And I know you had your chart for false teachers, but for me, a lot of them kind of overlap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the chart is for me to grade. No. The chart is for you. Okay? It's not for me. It's for you. My chart's for me. Your chart's for you. Don't listen to the prophet or dreamer. That's interesting. Who said to worship other gods. Well, I wouldn't do that anyway. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well. <laughs> Even if their sign or wonder came true. Now that would cause me to stand back and go. Mm -hmm. And gods could be anything. They're not going to just be outright like, oh, let's look at this statue. In, right. In our, dis in our society. It won't be that. It won't be right. that. It's all self-glorifying today. Yeah. Hence, Joni always says the prosperity gospel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in some of the wow. churches, like the Catholic Church and a lot of those churches, the, the saints are... Gods oh, for them. They are gods. I yes. Mean, mm -hmm. They, you know, my brother goes to Eastern Orthodox Church, which is all messed up, and they hold the bones of Saint John and pray wow. to Saint John for Isn't healing. Isn't that something? They'll yeah. tell you they're not praying to them; they're venerating them. Yeah. What's the venerating? Or what's the worship? Difference? So my yeah. somebody told me I was asked. I asked a Catholic friend. I was like, so you know, why do you pray to Mary or whatever? And they said, oh, we, we we just ask Mary to pray for us. It's like asking a friend to pray for you. They just have stronger prayers. And she's than we dead. Do. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm going. 
but you can go straight to God. So why, why would you <laughs> just go straight? Like yeah, you know Mary isn't here. I mean, we right? ask each other to pray for us, like pray for each other for the lottery. And but the that's because they think that the, the Holy Spirit only comes. But let's go back to that. where you were at Moss. Yeah. yeah. What is that? This I'm is the generation that they've been teaching, just that have been coming up, and that was their leaders, their parents, who have to be right. And all of a sudden, you have to step back and go, but is that right? Is everything my parents taught me right? No, it wasn't. Um, no, it wasn't. And that self-fulfillment that Amy brought up, <coughs> that generation is really very vocal compared to previous oh, generations. Oh, yes. So it's in your good face. Point. Very much. It is very mm -hmm. much in your face. Right. Good. And we all, we, I was talking to somebody the other day about how like our generation, like, feels like we know everything because we grew up with the internet and like has everything and also I went to engineering school and the more I learned in engineering school and science the more I realized we don't know anything like we don't know how anything works we were trying to model of water dripping out of everything's right here do it because we don't have that kind of knowledge to be able to model water dripping out of faucet and the, the professor couldn't do it either I mean it, you know like it's, we don't know as much as we think we know but our generation thinks we know everything we so do. then they they jump every on every generation video must on think Facebook. that they know every generation every generation <laughs> must that is true. they but know have, everything but we have knowledge that our kids they get to <laughs> yes. internet knowledge did not most of it's not true most of it's assumptions or whatever else right? but all of it is now true but it's accessible yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing and so and, it's um, be right. and if you yeah. hear it on tv it's true yeah if you hear it in the news it's true wow so see now we have to go back and we have to go, maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. Now I feel like I'm living in Russia. Maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. I don't know if that's really a true story or, or did he really say that or did he not say that? Did that really happen to him or did it not? I, I don't know because people lie. We were talking about the president, and like it used to be, you had to trust the president because you there wasn't yes. that kind of. Now we think we know everything. There's so much secrets. I mean, just when I worked for the military, all the stuff going on that they keep quiet from the public because they don't want to freak the public out when there's a submarine right off our. Well, coast. there there's are some things I want to keep secret. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. 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 but see, we don't. We assume we know everything going on and then freak out and blame the president for things when there's so we much think knowledge. We know Where it used to be, yeah. you didn't know everything and knew that you didn't know everything, and it was okay. So there was some trust there, you know. And now it's we know everything and we can tell you what he should be doing yeah. you know oh uh, and there's our yeah arrogant yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay Isaiah 28 7 oh, yeah. what were those false prophets okay now this is obvious that helps can I go back to Deuteronomy just sure. for a second uh, you mentioned how we can't even rely on their their wonders and their signs and miracles right. um, but since he talked about um, following and revering the Lord keeping his commandments and obeying him serving him, hold fast to him so the ultimate test for those prophets would be how they accept the law are That's they, a good test to put alongside them. Yeah. As opposed to, yeah. to their signs and wonders and their prophecies. Come good through. point. Good well, point. This passage also talked about the fact that God is testing us. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. To, to see. see yeah. how strong and it's my responsibility how we to love know the truth. Our God. It's not Jenny's responsibility to tell me what the truth is. Right. It's my responsibility to know it. To know what truth is. And then yeah. Jesus is not fooled exactly. by the false signs and wonders. Yes, and that is your faith being tested, mm -hmm. isn't it? Okay, and when Isaiah 28 said they're tottering, you know, <laughs> and described and confused by Mike, well, now that I can see. That would be an obvious what is wrong with this prophet that's trying to prophesy while he's tottering. Uh, that's good. Uh, that would be helpful. He's a bit altered. He's a bit altered. <laughs> Micah three eleven. Okay, he does it for money. Mm, yes. So that's great gain, and that's a great way to describe your being exploited mm -hmm. with false words. Okay, he's divining for money. Um, Second Chronicles eighteen. Now, okay, this story. I love Old Testament stories. I tell you, I'm an Old Testament <laughs> yeah. junkie. I love it. You know, <laughs> I, just, I could just start in Old Testament, just stay there. Um, Let's go back. Right? Mm -hmm. He called for four hundred, four hundred yes. prophets because they always told him what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So who asks for a real one? Jehoshaphat. A real one. A real one. Yeah. So what's he automatically calling four hundred? Yeah, false ones. <laughs> Before Ahab. Oh, was Ahab known for being kind? No. <laughs> he was married to Ahab. Jezebel. Jezebel? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so you had Ahab, who's a little 
I just think of him as, you know, the Queen of Hearts and then the little King of Hearts. <laughs> I think of Jezebel and Ahab. Yeah. That's just who I think of him because he's just this little. <laughs> yes, but I was wondering. I just think of Ahab like that because he's whining. I want that field and he won't give it to me. So she has the guy killed and gives him the fields. Like, there you go. Great. Right, that's a great wife. Well, she's getting things done. Yeah. And she's getting things done. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Take off with her back. Okay. <laughs> now, who's he called? Um, he knows who he is. Yeah. He knows he's Micaiah, and he never says anything good about me. I love that one. He never says anything good about me. It's always bad. I don't invite him to my party. Right? See, there's bad. the King of Hearts. Yeah. 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 I don't want him to come because he never brings any good that is. It's like, well, why do you think that is? So did Jehoshaphat back down? No. 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 I still want to see what the guy says. So tell me, tell me the in Reader's Digest version, um, the story. What happened? Once they go into battle, Ahab goes in disguise as <coughs> whose idea was that? Ahab, oh, a commoner, brilliant. and Jehoshaphat leads. Right. Knowing that the guy in the lead is the target. Right. Because they know that's the king. How come they didn't so, want to kill him? They didn't really want to kill him. They wanted to kill Ahab. Right. And they went up to him and thought, oh, no, that's not Ahab. <laughs> it can't be him. He's bigger. He's stronger. <laughs> yeah, so they stopped. They were like, oh, it's not so Ahab. So Ahab was actually kind of yeah. randomly killed. So I don't know. Randomly. So how'd he die? <laughs> okay, so how'd he die? Yeah, it's like it was a random arrow. Yeah. It even said random arrow, which just happened to hit what? <laughs> in, his in his armor. In his armor, in his armor which just happened to hit a vital organ. Yeah. yeah. Which just happened, happened to kill him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not instantly. <laughs> Not instantly. Oh, yeah, because he saw yeah, the Syrians. No. But Stay exactly. The thing that's so actually he saw. got me though is God sent angels to lie to get the prophets to lie. That one because it was talking about angel. The passage, the, well, see, we're back uh, up. Angels sent. It says God okay, sent angels to these prophets to lie. Yeah, it says so. Who the will the Lord said? The Lord said, "Who will persuade Ahab, king of Israel, to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead?" So the one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then the spirit came forward and stood before him and said, Lord, I will persuade him. And the Lord said, In what way? So he said, I will go out. He said the spirit, so I'm assuming an angel. I will go out and be a lying spirit, lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. That's verse 21 in 2 Chronicles 18. And, and the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. And therefore the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. The Lord has declared disaster against you. So the angel got the prophets to lie to say that he would be safe in battle, battle, so that he would go in battle and die. But mm -hmm. God arranged all that, so God had the angels lie. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, God didn't have the angels but, lie. Yeah, okay, so that's why God I got, had I the angels stir up the spirit of the false prophets to do what they were naturally mm -hmm. inclined to do. Right. That's how we need to explain okay. that, yeah. because that's also how that's we explain I never got into Pharaoh's heart started, was so. hardened by God. Yeah. yeah. So. God chose death for him. No, 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 no. No. God used Pharaoh's hard heart to just be who he is. He'd already seen ten plagues, lost his son. That wasn't enough. Still wasn't enough. When I stand up, the sun will rise. Funny, one of the plagues was darkness. He's still standing there. No sun came up. God, you, he knows. That's how we kind of try and put the sovereignty of God with the responsibility of man together, which we can never understand totally, <laughs> because we have this finite mind. Yes. However, God knew that these 400 false, were false prophets, mm -hmm. and they're going to speak just like Ahab wants them to speak. Right. To go, yeah. So, yeah. go. Go. I mean, but this you is go and do what you want to do. It just, you know, it, it, it keeps taking me back to when they were just, in, for, in the first chapter where it was talking about, you know, to add on to this and this and this and this and, mm. and, 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 to per, and then mm. it's to perseverance, which means, you know, looking at all of this stuff that looks like chaos and it looks so wrong, but it, we're supposed to have a, a calm spirit. We're supposed to have a peaceful spirit going through all of that. And truthfully, Jehoshaphat was a great example of that. If we look in Second Chronicles 22... Another great army is coming to him, and Jehoshaphat is, this chapter has meant so much to me in my life, because he stands back and he goes, 
Lord, we have nothing with this vast army cunning against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I'm like, God says, don't do anything. Stand back and watch what I will do. They didn't lift a finger. They were all dead. Because God fought the battle for them. Same Jehoshaphat, same guy about four chapters later. He wanted the true word of God. He got it. <coughs> Did he do it? No, he didn't. <coughs> Followed Ahab, and he went out. But Micaiah told him, don't go. You'll die. So Ahab doesn't like it. Where'd you put it? Prison. Prison. <laughs> and I'll get you when I come back. He said, you're not coming back. You won't be back. <laughs> he didn't come back. Okay? <laughs> Jeremiah. You spent a lot of time, a lot of references in Jeremiah. Um, what do you know about Jeremiah? What'd you say? Weeping <laughs> prophet. Oh, oh, sorry. Claire said something. Yes, sorry. Go ahead, sweetie. <laughs> the, weeping just the, yeah. the weeping prophet. Why? Why would he be the weeping prophet? Yeah, or there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> he never gets to say anything good. Yeah. Whenever everybody hates him. When God's calling me to do, I always go back to Jeremiah. Hey, it could be so much it worse. It could be so much worse. <laughs> they didn't like him at all. Because he didn't have anything, he had anything good to yeah. say. You guys are going to go in to captivity. Um, what have you been before? A bullfrog? <laughs> 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 Miss Judy and Miss Lynn literally just said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was your question. That was a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood a single word he said. <laughs> That was truly a quick trick question because what had he been before? What was his profession before he was a prophet? Well, his father was a priest, so he he grew up with that influence. But I don't know if he was a priest or not. In in your uh, in Jeremiah, it said that he had been consecrated before you. Chapter one, verse five. He was consecrated as a prophet before he was That's born. Yes. Wow. Oh. Yeah. 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 It wasn't anything yeah. else yeah. ever. Wow. You tricked us. I did. I told you it was a trick question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why does the Lord tell him not to be afraid? Because he's with him. Yeah. Why would he have fear? There is so many. <laughs> Every time he opens his mouth, it's not good. And all the Israelites go, oh, here he comes again. Oh, what did he <laughs> condemn us for this time? So did they listen to the words of God? No. What if they had turned away? Maybe no Babylonian captivity. I don't know. They could have repented. But they didn't. Instead, they got offense at what he said. They got offended at the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of a little familiar. Like he yeah. had the sermon because he, you know, he had the prophet, so he had the sermon, so he saw what was going on and he knew it was kind of coming. Come, like growing up with that kind of. Can you imagine? I mean, like I know Jesus had that. I've always wondered with Jesus, you know, like how he knew, he you know, God. he knew who's going to betray him, yet he still hangs out with him, you know, still. like. Jesus is still God. This is like an actual human dude. You know? <laughs> right? I mean, God, Jesus was human too, but like, you know, this is a sinner human guy. You know, like the fact that he had to grow up with that kind of knowledge of what's going right. on, you know. That would be and to know that from his birth, and he told him that. That's good news. We're, we're God's chosen people. All the time, so he's not going to put us in there. No way. Yeah. And you think about that. Um, God called him before he was ever born to do this. Uh, how come the people listen to the false prophets? They said a nice, nice message that this is what we want to hear. This is what's going to happen to us because, because we're God's chosen people. 
God wouldn't allow that to happen to us. We got the temple. Right. We got the right. Holy City. You can't Vegas. touch us. I go to church every Sunday. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? God is I love. checked this, this, and I did that commitment, and I brought that sacrifice, and that was it. Mm. Same thing too. Everyone was greedy for gain. Mm -hmm. It said from the prophet to the priest. Everyone's a big word. Yeah. Prophets led them in your futility. Mm -hmm. Do we see that today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That now brings me great sorrow. Yeah. Because I see eyes blinded. And blinded and blinded. And then they like this lifestyle that they have. <clears throat> even though they know that they've heard the truth. They still want to walk here. So I'm going to walk here because that makes me feel better. And there is no sense of eternity, only the here and now. Which your flesh cries out to me every day, anyway. Yes. You had false teachers, okay? Give me some of the things of their character in your chart that you did. In my chart? Your big chart, <laughs> which they never give enough room for. But oh, I had enough room. Yeah, I did. I, did even I could write small, so I was okay. Me too. <laughs> Well, uh, have, character. I, What's a character? I have the greed and I have sensual conduct of unprincipled men. Good. Self liars, greed, self will, um, daring, their stains daring. and blemishes, sensual and their deception. Manipulative and exploitative. They carouse among you. The nip and the carouse among you. Self will. Great, bold, and willful. Enticing. Uh, so it doesn't uh, just unstable, affect them, does so it? Unstable. unstable. We're going to get into that just yeah. a little bit, too. What got me was they don't tremble when they revile angelic majesties. Right. Like, an angel's appeared and like, well, oh, 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 whatever. And what is, anytime an angel appeared, what do they always say first? Do not be afraid. afraid. Do not be afraid. Right. These just. I'm not scared. But yeah. see, right. Sodom, Sodom, they weren't. Not they're it. Defiant. They're yeah. in the vein. Is that not how we live today? Is that not everything that we see today? Whether you live together um, and have children out of wedlock, so what? That's just the culture. It's no big deal. So I take drugs and I don't take care of my kids, so my kid goes into foster care. So what? Uh, I don't want this baby, even after it's born. So you let it die. That's legal now. This baby is an inconvenience. Let me avoid that. Uh, homosexual marriage. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. There's no difference. Homosexuals in leadership in churches. In church. In yeah. churches. Yeah. It says among you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says among you. Um, quickly, I just kind of put real. Obviously, I haven't listed everything, and you probably already have all this stuff in your chart. Uh, sensual, malign the way of the truth. In sensuality, you do that anyway. <coughs> Greedy, and it just goes on and on. Their doctrine is destructive heresies, which you think you would be able to see like that. But the first word says secretly. secretly. Yeah. Stealth. Remember I said it like that stealth plane that we have in our uh, military. They deny the master. Okay. Well, a lot of people deny Jesus. We're going to see how, how influential that is. They exploit with false words. Well, their end, this kind of comforted me a little bit, that they do have an end. Swift destruction. Doesn't seem so swift to me, but a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years with the Lord. So in his timing, it's swift. Their judgment's not idle. Their destruction is not asleep. That's comforting. God sees. God knows. Verses 4 to 10, um, I'm not going to take the time to read it because I know you guys were totally in that. Um, 10 obviously really describes them. Old Testament examples, okay? So we got sinful angels, uh, ancient world, Noah, Lot, Sodom, Gomorrah, all that stuff. Why do you think he listed that? Exactly. This whole book is about reminding you. Yeah. No, remember. And boy, would they know that. Like, those are all things that they were so familiar with. Very familiar with. I mean, they could just probably spout that whole story out to you. OK? 
Okay. That's like the Bible to them. They know. It was the Bible to them. That's right. <coughs> and he sticks in there. God knows how to deliver mm -hmm. the righteous. Okay, think about Noah. <coughs> Again, I said that last week. In the whole world. All these people in the whole world. God puts no and this is Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives in, and he shuts the door. That's a lot of people. Think about Noah's ministry. And nobody got saved. That's right. <laughs> nobody. So what was it, 120 years he worked on the boat? I believe that's right. Yeah. Nobody yeah. got saved except nobody got saved. because of him. Doesn't say he stopped sharing. But he got to look at himself and go, am I saying it wrong? <laughs> they am I doing something wrong here? He did share Why? because the people mocked him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. What he was doing. And they didn't want him to do Right. And you missed that big of a boat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, we have to remember. Oh, yeah. 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 So, that's right. <laughs> right. But it's a long time. time to think, you know, that there's going to be... And it's a long time to say, yeah, sure, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Okay, okay. Uh, something that I have never thought about before until recently. We have Noah who's over 600 years old. <laughs> right. What ages are Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives? And why don't they and have children? No children? Why don't they have children? Mm. Right? Mm. Busy building a, a boat. Yes. <laughs> I know, too <laughs> tired. <laughs> you know, find all that for one. Generations and generations yeah. should have been. Wow. That we don't know anything if there were or weren't. Mm. Should have been. If there were and they had all turned. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was saying. Saying. Yeah. But I feel like that would have been addressed. I, you know, I would they, think. If yeah. they had left parts of their Noah's family behind. Right. Or if well, God had not blessed them with children <laughs> up to that point because. Yeah. The they were going to be the ones to populate the earth again. Yeah. What amazes me is how they populated the earth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they started popping out. That wasn't good when they landed off the ark. How they started to pop. Yeah, that wasn't good. Wait. <laughs> they <laughs> indulged the flesh in corruption. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Like I said, I got a big visual of that on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Um, they despise authority, daring, bold, self. Build. Like Amy said, they tre they don't even tremble mm. with supernatural beings. <laughs> that can totally wipe them out with their finger. But that's why they're all the witchcraft, but they are teaching the children. Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, nothing. You know. You're right. It's like no big deal. Yeah. Now, <laughs> because I love animals. I got a good visual. I didn't have to read this and go. But these like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct, to be captured and killed. Creatures of instinct to be captured and killed. That's the whole purpose. Reviling where they have no knowledge will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. Okay. Have you ever seen even a movie maybe of a rabid animal? What do they do? <laughs> They're foaming at the mouth. They attack. They attack. Um, yeah. For no reason. For no, no reason. Right. For no reason. Right. Yes. It, it's like, but why would you do that? I'm not hurting you. I'm reasoning. <coughs> Can't be dealt with. Again, we, we've adopted a, a, a rescue dog. He will not go anywhere near the pool. Ever. Ever. There is no reasoning, there's no coaxing, there's no gentle calling. No, absolutely not. That represents terror to him, and I don't know why. There is no reasoning with him. He is an animal. I can't talk him down off the shelf. I can't do that. I can't do it. There is no reasoning. I did, I did try. Um, that's how these people are. I run into them daily. I listen to them on the news daily. Unreasoning. There is no logic. 
like Joni said, in what they're saying, there's no, there's not even any logic. I mean, in this world, that doesn't even make sense what you're saying. One plus one is still two. Yeah. I don't have air care if you have common core or not. Yeah. It's still two. <laughs> yeah, right. We're gonna get rid of that. Well, we're a little more than animals. <coughs> because we're, we we're evolved from animals. Mm -hmm. We That's are no, we are no better than animals. In fact, the souls of yeah. animals are more important. More important. Yeah. They're yeah. more righteous than humans because they don't that, commit evil. They're that dog protected. racing they're one, protected. Uh, our babies yeah. are not protected, but they're protected. But the turtles are. Right. Yeah. That dog racing amendment that passed mm -hmm. in the last election, mm -hmm. if you actually read the wording, the very first yeah. paragraph says that um, all animals are to be hum treated humanely. Or uh, the, way, the way it was worded is pretty much giving animals the same rights as humans. And now yes. it's in the Florida Constitution. Exactly. So and it can be used, I mean, it was, for, it was for getting rid of the dog racing, but they stopped the wording of it. They can use it any way they want now in Florida because it's now in our Constitution. Secretly right. introducing yeah. destructive yeah. heresies. And a lot of people voted <laughs> for it just thinking they were being nice and releasing all these dogs out of the dog and races. truthfully, the Greyhound food. people told you not to vote for it. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Again, they revile in the daytime. Don't care. There's Day no work right. ethic. Hmm? There's no work ethic. Oh, there's no work ethic. Mm -hmm. you go back and they revel it. in the daytime. You don't work. You yeah. Don't they. Yeah. Right. We'll give it to you for free. For free. Mm -hmm. And lots of it. This is interesting. Stains, blots, and blemishes. <clears throat> <laughs> they are stains. Yeah. They are blots. Yeah. Those are they obvious. Are, you're a blemish. <laughs> Those are, no, yeah. a bl that's obvious. They didn't have, you know. These are pronouns. Um, yeah. Concealer. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Now, the deceptive and they carouse with you. Now, that in itself is disturbing to me. That means I'm with people that are carousing. Therefore, I'm with them. I think we have some in our senators. Uh, yeah, you think, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you step back. Hopefully, this is always a reevaluating of how I live my Christian life because they're among me, <clears throat> they're with me. So I really have to be careful that this person that I'm following, this leader, whatever, is not, you know, sheep's outfit and has the claws underneath, and I'm not paying attention. In the church, we have to be careful with our volunteers. It drives me crazy, and we lived a lot of places, so we visited a lot of churches, and it drives me crazy how many places that you offer to teach Sunday school class, and they'll do a background check, and then you're in. I'm going, mm -hmm. you don't know what I believe. I've had that yeah, almost exactly. every almost every church I have been to. Right? When I volunteer to teach like high school or something, like they're desperate for volunteers, so they'll just take me in, and I'm going, don't you want to know my doctrine? Like, I mean, I know I'm good, but you don't know I'm good. And right. you're letting me teach these teenagers. I know I'm kids. trustworthy, but you don't know that I'm trustworthy. Like, I mean, it, it's, and it's in most, I mean, every ministry will sit right. so quick for volunteers, and as soon as my jump's at it, record. it's, yeah. yeah. Because it's a background check, so we've got the whole, like, you know. So bad. But we don't check out what they're teaching. Um, mm -hmm. Just in case, because I looked it up, I know what my interpretation of corrals is. Go for it. But what it actually means in the Greek yeah. was simply to entertain lavishly. Yes. Now, doesn't that make it a little bit more dangerous? Because <laughs> what's wrong with just people being generous and inviting you in and having a nice dinner for you? Right. Which is exactly how that can be interpreted. It doesn't mean wild parties. Yeah. Yeah. Which that's, that's what you think it means. Because exactly. in English, that's where our mind goes. But it, it was a little bit more simple, which meant more widespread and more To be well fed, to feed together, to <laughs> revel with someone. Yeah. Loose. Loose. So for churches, I mean, I've always, whenever I get close enough to like a head person in church to talk to him, I always, because I'll bring up the fact, like, hey, I got to volunteer with nothing. I'm like, look, if you pray about it, God's going to send the right person. You can be strict on it. Uh -huh. You've got to trust. Absolutely. You might go a little Wait. while without a teacher, but Wait. you've got to trust that God's going to send the right person, not take the person. So that's important. what they, it's your so desperate volunteers. It's like, well, God's got somebody picked out that right? you might have to wait and it'll test your faith, but it's coming. You've got to be strict And God's timing is always better. What and person is always better. Pastor dumping. This happens a lot. Oh, right? Pastor, Pastor dumping. dumping. Yep. Yeah. We had I problems. like that. So we're gonna we're gonna counsel him a little bit, but he goes back to a leadership position, right? And a lot of times it just repeats the cycle yeah. over and over, okay. and over and over again. Kay goes into this a little bit. Eyes full of adultery. She's gonna tell you that means that every woman they see, they want to have sex with. 
Right. And that's where they're unreasoning irrational animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. It goes back to that. And we have a lot of that. Thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they never cease from sin. Oh. Their hearts are trained in greed. Mm -hmm. So obviously, where do they get that from? Their parents. Their parents. Um, or their mentors or people they follow and they want to be just like them. I like how he writes that little accursed children. Yes. <laughs> Why does he call them children? Why doesn't he call them accursed people? Because they're, they're acting, they're acting Thank you. like kids. Because they're acting yeah. like children. Spoiled brats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Forsaken the right way and they've gone astray or after Balaam. Mm -hmm. Would they have known who Balaam was? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Tell me what you learned about Balaam. <coughs> well, he was a prophet for hire. He was. He didn't necessarily want to speak against God. He made it sound good. I can only say what God wants me to say unless... unless but what did he unless want? Unless you give me the right price. That's what he wanted. Yeah. He yeah. rather yeah. the money... Rather than be a true prophet, I will God. Say, I rather have the money. But it was interesting that in the end, you know, Balaam didn't just flat out speak false. Because God. he couldn't. So he opened you know his mouth, he and what came out was what he, God said. Was what God said. But what he did was he told them how to get around it and get what they wanted. What they wanted. Exactly. And so I in the end, he was killed. Okay, yes. and and again, he loved the wages from on. Oh, Righteousness. That's what he loved. I had to look up a commentary on him at first because I was confused because he said, because God tells him, and, you know, if uh, if the men call you, go. And then he goes and he got in trouble. I'm going, but didn't God say go? Like, I was really confused. I had to look it up because I was like, what in the world? This one I had more time to stay, so I actually had time to look it up. <laughs> and anyway, the whole it, he says if the men call you, but the people, the men that came never actually said anything about going that time. He jumped and went before they ever said anything that time. So he actually, he was, he was, excited to go. He, mm -hmm. he jumped mm -hmm. and went before they ever said anything. So that and and can't me. you relate that back to Moses going and Zipporah saving Moses' life yes. by circumcising their child because God was going to kill Moses because he hadn't obeyed the law, even though he called him. He knew what was right to do, but he wasn't doing it. As Moses, as this prophet, they're held to a high standard. They know. And like Deuteronomy 18.22 said, these are the words of God, and God will hold it accountable <coughs> to you. So you have to, you know, now you're accountable. Right. Jane, Instead, there's go another ahead. lesson from what she said is that God might tell you to go and do something, and then that opportunity comes up again. It does not necessarily mean you're supposed to do it again. Again, that's the sermon of, of Holy Spirit. And like, that, that, that is your relationship. Because mm -hmm. Christianity is a relationship. It is not a religion. Because mm -hmm. God told me to go before, so this must be tell right. me again, but I'm not going to wait to find out. Right? Mm -hmm. This was just a recap in Numbers 22 of, of uh, you know, the king of Moab wants him to curse Israel. He, he wants to, but he can't. Um, and his donkey telling him, <laughs> have I ever had that character before to do all this, you know? <laughs> no? You know, and the angel says even the dumb donkey knows better. <laughs> Did that stop it? Do you know how many times this always played in my head as a kid? It felt like the horses were acting up. Like, right? <laughs> like getting thrown off of a horse that never really moved. Did you kind of look at him and go, are you going to talk to me now? <laughs> that would be cool, though. Like, you don't, um, not out loud. <laughs> Did you get that in Numbers 23.5? And uh, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 23, five and Numbers 24. God blessed Israel. He held those because he loved them. It said in there, because he loved them. That's why he wouldn't let Balaam curse them. Because he loved them. Were they being obedient? No. The Lord held back the great honor that was promised to Balaam. And he wouldn't let, Balak said, I can't do it. I can't give it to you because you didn't do what I asked. Mm -hmm. But Balak didn't take the responsibility. He said, God, God won't let me bless you with this money that I was going to give you or whatever because you didn't do what I asked you to do. In Revelation 2, do you remember what church that was talking about in verse 14? It was Pergamum. 
There was a church in Pergamum, and they had followed the way of Balaam. He taught, this is how much he loved the wages and wanted them. Balaam taught Balak to put a stumbling block before Israel so that they would sin. Now, does it say that? It does not. However, you go into Numbers 25, the daughters of Moab. Who, who, was, who was asking him to curse them? The king of Moab. So the daughters of Moab, he knows, I'll just get them to go in there, since Balaam can't curse them. I'll entice them with idolatry and adultery and immorality, which they kind of had a habit of doing. And the king of Moab knew that. He invited the sons of Israel to sacrifice their gods, so they ate. They bowed down and they joined themselves to the Isle of Peor. So they're immoral, adultery, idolatry, God has to judge them. Horrible plague, horrible. Lots of people die. So did Balak get what he wanted? Yes. He sure did. He sure did. Numbers 31, Balaam's counsel led to sin, <clears throat> which caused the plague. Because he knew Israel's weakness. He wasn't dumb. So if God's not going to let me speak a curse on them, <laughs> let me let you know this is how it, you know. And don't you think, do to me that's like the sibling rivalry. You know, you do this for those <laughs> and, and then and you can, you know, and then I'll stand up for you and say you didn't do it. Because I was like, <laughs> okay, so I was like, let's pull down. Just like. Not that I ever did that, but it's like, it's just what it's like. It's just what it's like, because I know, I mean, you can't put that in front of Dan and he will take it because I'll take it, because he loves that. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Second Peter, when we get to the end, springs without water and mist driven by a storm. I'm like, okay. Yes, that reminds me of Jude. But what are these? <coughs> Useless. Yeah. Useless. It's like, oh, finally rain's coming. Mist. Is that right? Yeah. Well, what did that do? That just made me hotter. <laughs> yeah. Created more steam. Right. Yeah. Now there's more steam coming off my body because of the humidity. Yeah. We understand that. We understand it. Right? You're so thirsty. And you go to that spring, and what does it have? Mist. <laughs> this is what these guys are like. Their false teaching was ultimately unstable. Do you think it looked like it was unstable in the beginning? Very attractive. Sort of like socialism. Ah, oh, right? We'll just pay for everybody's college and everybody's medical care. And who's the we exactly? Yeah, right. Does it matter? Let's just. It's just it just sounds good. Really? Because I don't have to pay. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. And I want free. Hey, social would be perfect in a perfect world where everybody was giving and sharing of their stuff. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's sin that kind of ruins all of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like Act Church, right? Yeah. It's, socialism has never worked in any country ever. No. Venezuela is a great. Even the pilgrims tried it. Even the pilgrims tried it. it. Yeah. 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 And John Smith. It don't work. Didn't work. You know me. Okay, black darkness is reserved for them. What did we learn what the black darkness was like? <laughs> what it's like? <laughs> Torture. Torture. No relief. Yeah. No relief. Mm -hmm. Evil that you can. Mm -hmm. Murky, dark. I'm like, I've watched Harry Potter up to like number four, and that black thing that comes out, I'm like, like that. Yeah, like, like that. Ugh. That's, that's where they are. I love how so many secular movies you see so many Christian principles. Right? It's like the story of Jesus and the story of God is just such a story, they steal pieces of it. Right. Because those are really cool. Are but we just yeah. want to put the stuff that makes us change our behavior. Yeah. Okay, they speak arrogant words of vanity. This is vanity. This is interesting. I, I know vain words. I get that. I mean, I'm so vain, I got contacts that had glasses. I don't like glasses. <laughs> That's not what this means. No. <laughs> it's devoid of truth and appropriateness. Okay. 
unreality. I get faced with that every day on the news, right? <laughs> Purposelessness. This is describing the Oscar. There you go. <laughs> Instability. Frailness, which makes it unstable. Okay. Aimlessness due to lack in purpose or any meaningful end. Nonsense because it's transitory. So it never stays. It's nonsense. So you can speak nonsense all you want. And then you leave. It's kind of like the logic. There's so many people that, like, you, their logic, you can take from what, like, just the, the logic of why abortion's okay and try to apply it to something else. And it doesn't apply to something else. But then they get mad when you try to do that because it, it's not transitory. You can't take the logic of, you know, this and apply it to that. You can't. It, logic should be logic. It took me a truth. while to understand that homosexual marriage will be harmful to my marriage. Because what are you hearing? What's the problem? Just let them be married. They're not going to hurt you. How does that bother you? They just that just lets them live their life and you can live yours. But that devalues my marriage. Because now it's not what God said between one man and one woman. Well, how does that devalue your marriage? It makes it frivolous. It's just a piece of paper. No. No, no, no. It's not just a piece of paper. And those marriages, typically, they don't last. But now you've devalued marriage, especially in the sight of God. And then you have to bring children into it. And that gets a whole different aspect in there. And then you get the rights of a spouse. That happens a whole new can of worms. Very interesting when you look at and you reason it because it sounds really good, doesn't it? Sounds like, well, that's loving. But it isn't. And it's transitory because it's nonsense. But you don't take it as nonsense. You take it as tolerance. If you can love it, well, we love each other, so it's okay. Well, can you love an animal? Can you love this? I mean, you can't And it. there's the thing. slippery slope. Yeah. There's no it's not transitory. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't. Which you got to be able to apply polygamy, everything. You which know? leads into, you can marry your cat. Mm -hmm. Which leads into, because it has devalued marriage. And it goes down and down. Just like, um, I know Dr. Dobson was talking about in the 70s, the abortion. That abortion thing, if you allow that to happen, euthanasia comes right on its feet. Mm -hmm. And then mercy killing because the old people, yeah. you know, you need to kill those people. Mm -hmm. Or you're in a terminal disease, so you need to be killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that brings up like or you drug cost. abuse. There you yeah, go. Drug abuse. That's it. Like it's just hopeless, so just give me suicide. the drugs so I can just yeah. check out. If somebody's on life support, they've already, I mean, they've already those arguments now. Right. So if somebody's on life support, they're not really viable anyway, so why are we letting them live? Yes. Hence their, Terry Shiva. Yeah. That's already yeah. in the law. Yeah. Yes. And even the New York, their new law with the um, full term abortion. Right. Uh, that's already seeped into if the, the baby is killed in the womb. Oh, right. uh, there's already a case in the courts about that where the they used to uh, count that as a person too. That, that's no longer counted as a person. It's just, just so disgusting. So I, they, I, uh, I, there's someone I guilty of killing the mother. I truly look for some disaster. Yeah. I am looking for some disaster. That's what, that's, that's going this to happen. chapter, that's really what, like, I mean, I know all this stuff, but, like, thing after thing, the donkey talking, the angels being there, God sending the angels to, you know, encourage the prophets. Right, 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 You know, right. but, you know, all of, and then when Noah and everything else is, we forget how much control God has. Don't we? Like, it's, it seems, and all the different punishments and stuff that in the Old Testament, you know, all these famines and all the things that happened were all God's judgment. Where yeah. we see it and we're like, oh, it just happened. That hurricane just happened. You know, that, no. you know, the, you know, so it, it's really opened my eyes a little bit more to right? like the world and what's going on. And I mean, truthfully, you had me at the donkey pocket. <laughs> I'm like, I would love for Jake to be able to talk to me, <laughs> to tell me what happened. <laughs> and yet I don't want to know. Because I have to go find those people. And all these so. bad things that keep happening in our country are punishment. Oh, I mean, that's yeah. what it is. Oh, it's yeah. Like this, uh, when we looked at New Testament <laughs> cross-references, which I think um, was page mm, 47 in your homework. Yeah. You can start with Matthew. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, they appeal to people with teaching. Teaching. Think about this. That allows people 
to hold on to their fleshly desires and sensuality. Okay, so so what is this churches that have homosexual teachers? <coughs> That's exactly what that is. Okay? We we love you. Come on in. We accept everybody. Um, but there's judgment for that. You appeal to people with teaching that allows them to hold on to their fleshly diet. So, so where's the call to suffering to deny <coughs> yourself? Take up your cross and follow me. And I'll tell you, you just said something that made me think you have to be very, because Chuck will say, we accept everyone. But the other side of this, we hold them accountable. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. There Come is in, no holding accountable. Which I had to churches. actually... Um, Address. I'm like, so what did you say about this in my um, fostering group? It's like, uh, because Devereaux was asked us right at our meeting with all these other churches represented. Um, So (laughs) if we had a a couple that was uh, homosexual or lesbian or gay or whatever, would you welcome them and their children into your church and your youth group? I kept my mouth shut because I'm not church decision making, right. but I know, uh, I hope, what we would say, according to God's word is, we welcome you to come in and listen to the gospel, and then you make a decision. You follow the gospel and repent, or you don't, and then we say bye. Right. I guess it's a true love. That's See, it. I mean, if you truly love somebody, any sin they're in, any right. sin they're any in, sin. if they're living in a continuous sin and you truly it love must somebody, be confronted. you don't want them to have this judgment we're talking about. Oh, man, so, I, I mean, don't. like, if, we, if the church really loves, like, this, my mom said that she remembers when she was a kid, there was a bridge that, like, fell. She remembers watching it on TV or whatever, and cars going off the end of the bridge, and somebody's videotaping the whole thing, obviously, because it's on TV. And it, that, that picture has always stuck oh. in her mind because, like, you know, somebody's videotaping the whole thing instead of running out there and screaming at people going, that's stop! What, that's what Christians do every day. Yeah. Is we just yeah. watch them go off the cliff sitting there watching it. That's not love. Right. That's not love at all. That like, that should, I mean, yes, you're not going to get yelled at and people are going to think you're tolerant and everything else. Right. But that's not love. That is not love. Now, it says they can be recognized by their fruit in Matthew 7. Yes. Mm-hmm. Immediately? Mm-hmm. Think about it. It takes fruit a while to grow. It takes fruit a while to ripen. And then it takes fruit a while to be picked. So it's not going to be immediate. So how often do you have to pay attention? It's exhausting, isn't it? Um, Matthew 24 says it will arise and mislead many. Uh, here's the slide. With great signs and wonders. Well, you had to compare it to Second Peter. Second Peter 2 said many is going to follow. <coughs> Why? Why do they follow that? It's true. They feel like it's true. And you know, if it's teaching that allows me to keep all my yeah. stuff, then that's for me. But Jesus actually said they'll lead astray even the elect. Oh, is so it that? Oh, yeah. That one kind of, I was like, yeah. whoa. Who are the elect? Who are the elect? What are you looking for? Advil will be the orange, not clear. Sorry, she needs medicine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that's not the answer. Who are the elect? Anyone called? Anyone called? Any saved? Can they be led astray? Have you ever been led astray? Absolutely. I have. Totally snookered. Totally. <laughs> kind of stand back and go, how did that happen? I didn't see that coming. Not a good dumb. feeling. Yeah. Hmm? Then you feel dumb. Then you feel so yeah. stupid. I did that recently watching a TV show with Ben. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's true? He's like, no way. I'm like, oh, I feel stupid now. <laughs> 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 I don't usually get those straight like that. You know? like, oh. And see, I have felt that often because I am naive. I was brought up oh, naive. Yeah. I can sit in movies and have to lean over and go, what, what is that going to go? Okay. I was watching the, um, the Green Book. Mm-hmm. Where a New York taxi driver mm-hmm. takes this black pianist who's brilliant <coughs> to the Deep South. And, well, they had nicknames for Jews, blacks, and Italians. 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 Yeah. I didn't know that. I don't know their nicknames. <laughs> He's like, I said, what is that? He goes, that's the Italians. I'm like, oh, that's 
<laughs> that, that's the shoes. Like, oh, no. I, I didn't know. It, it's I just didn't know. So you have I, to watch Gran Torino again. To uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was interesting though, because like with the group, I went the my experience this week and everything is there's the false teachers and then there's the elect that are actually Christians that are being led astray. So trying to decide the two, like are they just led astray and we need to bring them back, or are they true false teachers that we really need to? Because I mean, it's, it's and how we know we should deal with false yeah. teachers, right? By, the, like, by so dealing with it. Yeah. That's the only way you know is to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. Um, X twenty said they were savage wolves. Among the leaders, and here's your left. They draw away disciples of Christ. I loved in that section that the, um, they will point. The true believer will point to Christ in what they do. So that's one of our tests: is what they're saying pointing me to Christ, yes. mm -hmm. or to them, or to them. Or to something else, or selfish desire, or even to or my selfish desire. Yeah. See now that, that reminds me of Apollos Christ. and yeah. Paul. Yes. It yes. reminds me of Apollos and Paul because right. they were following Apollos. I'm not going to follow Paul. And Apollos was actually teaching something that was a little off. So the believers took him in, corrected his doctrine, and out he came again. And he was correct. He didn't know he was wrong. Right. He he received the instruction, the correction. I'm like, exactly. So however they did that, that's what we need to do. Because this guy had a great following, but some of his stuff was a little off. And they had to correct his doctrine. I'm like, wow. What if, what if we would do that at the beginning? Instead of let it get so whacked out. Yeah. These people are still beneficial to the cross if their doctrine can be straightened out. Okay? Second Timothy. That was another happy chapter. <laughs> we just had a study that that's what the my study school was. It was on last week. Was Second Timothy? It was on first, second Timothy and Titus. It was a little heavy. And then we got into really heavy stuff. But anyway, yeah. but I, I was talking to the kids about what so I said, who's that forgotten to see a motivational speaker? You know, like there's right. always motivational speakers. Always. Yeah. What's the difference between a motivational speaker and a pastor? Yeah. Mm. And they're like in most churches nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Like this is this is why you need to know this. It should, if it's not fully pulling from the scripture, red flag. And yeah. the parents need to teach them this because they're go my eighth but graders are going off and finding their own it. churches in That's four years. The parents have to know it. With good pastors, I mean, like teaching the Bible and everything, but like after going a year and you never felt connected once. You realize that they're, I mean, they are teaching scripture, but they're choosing the good scripture. Right. They're, choosing, they're not teaching any lies, but right. they're only choosing the good stuff, which means they're which not really was, choosing the whole truth. That was something for application questions, which I right. thought was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really, really excellent. These men who oppose the truth and have depraved minds, okay, because they captivate weak women led by impulses, always learning but never able to come to the true knowledge. Always learning. Why does he say captivate weak women? Led by impulses. Even like Eve. She was led astray. Yeah. We're led by impulses a great deal. Mm -hmm. That is a fault of women. And you want a good man. So you're looking for, right. you're told this, right? right? You're right. told to find a strong Christian. Right. Man, and that is. I, can just, be I see it I see it different too. There's the strong women you see leading our country that look like strong women and stuff, but in my opinion, a weak woman is somebody that's overcome by emotions and not thinking logically. Mm -hmm. Because women mm -hmm. are so easily led astray by emotions because we are emotional. We are mm -hmm. much more emotional mm -hmm. than men. So they're controlled by what sounds good, what feels good, what sounds like a great thing. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. why there's so many women in the liberal knowledge, the you know, the pro choice and this and that is because it sounds good. We should give them a choice. Yeah. It's all it's all emotion. They may look strong. But they're really weak because they're led by their emotions. A weak woman would be one who is not grounded in the Word of God. True. Yeah. Do you but know a lot of them? Yes. And that can be changed. Were you one? Praise <laughs> God. Because I was. I mean, I thought I was grounded, and then yeah. so many things I would learn. I'm like, yeah. Oh, that was wrong. Oh, I thought I knew that. No, I didn't know that. It takes a strong person to also admit when you're wrong, right? That's Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That is grace, 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 yeah, grace, grace. Person, Holy Spirit, yes. You know, because you, you sit there and you go, but I was always taught, but it doesn't say that. 
What does it say? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you repent. No, oh, yeah. Lord, I'm so that sorry. Mean, and forgive me for anybody I actually told that that, because I don't know who that might have been. But oh, please. Oh, Holy Spirit, open their eyes too, because I might have said what I shouldn't have said. And then that was wrong. I just had a visual of the week women, the State of the Union address a couple weeks ago. All the white women sitting in white, and they're looking at each other to see whether they're supposed to clap. I know, like, I know. Like, I know. Is this is clap? Like, they're, it's like they were like, looking for confirmation. Like, how, I mean, that's not strong. You're doing Tell me something. Doing. Are there weak women that come to church because they're weak? Yes. Absolutely. What are they looking for? That's why it's pray. I mean, that's why we're... That's why them. they can pray on them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I think but women need for, help, Amy. Yes. Yeah. When they come to the church, they're looking for their self-confidence in Christ. They've been beaten up. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. But why come to the church? Why the church? Because they think it's safe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's and a safe place protected. for their kids. It's like going to a um, Baptist college and looking for your husband there because she thinks that he's there to be God. That's what she can do. <laughs> 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 no. Should the church, though, be this healing place <laughs> that attracts these women that are hurt. Yes, and no, this is a safe place. <clears throat> these relationships that I see with men and women, they're healthy. That's encouraging. It's like, that can't happen. But at the same time, okay. you got to tell, especially the kids, like, keep, like my dad always said, keep your head on a swivel. You know, well, and he, he also had another thing that even people in churches have not holds, but anyway, that would be it. Well, absolutely. Like, they're, they're, they're everywhere, you know. Yeah, and because it says that To be moments. aware. We're supposed to always be aware. Mm. As women, we're supposed to be, and as Christians, we're supposed to be aware. Keep your eyes but I want you to think, too, of the, um, the spiritual gifts that we have. We have such spiritual gifts, and man, if there are people with discernment, they should be, as my father said, like white on rice on them. These people with mercy should be all around these weak women, encouraging, comforting, leading. That's their spiritual gift. That's how the body operates healthily. It's supposed to. That's what it's supposed to be. I think um, also a, a weak woman could be classified as someone who, is, who thinks they're better than a man. <laughs> And that's another. Yes. And that's another. Tr that is very true. Including in marriage. I mean, I know I've mm. been, you know, I've been um, wrong in thinking that sometimes about them. Like, I don't know. I think you can. Explain. I know better than you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know better yeah. than you. But yeah. and then it's immediately like a, a conviction where it's like, I don't know. What I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I did, but I don't. Yeah. There's my, yeah. And you're my supposed to be again. helpmates, not competition. Right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Great lesson learned. But the men also are supposed to be discerning and wise yeah. and yeah. covering <coughs> your wives and protecting mm -hmm. right. so that you're not led astray. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where we failed in the American church is mm -hmm. there's not... The men are the strength that they're supposed to be. I agree. So the church very much caters to women. If you act the whole how a church runs and how and we run the American true. church, it very much caters to women and not to men. That and is true. And that's one of the, I mean, I've seen, I've heard a lot, I used to go to pastor conferences all the time because they were free and they were nearby and they were fun. And, and so, like, and that was one of the Southern Baptist <laughs> Commission pastor conferences, and that was one of the topics that came up often is how to change our churches to grow leaders and men. But see, that's another. That's another, could be false doctrine yeah. even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, like, again, that's nothing. Yeah, that's different. different. Um, let's go back to that. Let's see. Uh, just, okay, 2 Corinthians 11, which is interesting. Where does this come before? What's our love chapter? 13. <laughs> yeah. Cracks me up. Um, spiritual gifts comes in here in chapter 12 as well. Um, they disguise themselves as apostles of Okay, it doesn't say they're servants of Satan, but if you're disguising yourself as an apostle of Christ, what are you? Opposite. Yeah. You are the opposite, <laughs> and your goal is the opposite. Okay, we had Philippians 3. She asked you, what does it mean to be an enemy of the cross of Christ? Okay, so I quoted that. Um, take up your cross and follow me. Okay, what comes before that? Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. So the cross is death to self. Right. So if they are enemies of the cross of Christ, what is a lot of the teaching? 
building yourself self, up. Self, self, self. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. That helps me put this in this column. I can actually go to a bookstore and say it's self-help. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Yeah, right. This is my self-help. The word is my self-help. Now, are there good books in there? There are. I'd be very careful with where they are and who I read, but Boy Spears and Simon enables me to do this walk. So here's the deny the master who bought them. What did the, how did the master buy them? With his life on the cross. So if they don't think that's not for them, then they're an enemy of the cross of Christ. Second Timothy 4, here's your safeguard. Preach the word. <coughs> Preach the word in season, out of season. Be ready to give an account for what you believe to anybody, anytime. Why? <laughs> you gotta know what you know and why you know it because if you don't own it, Nobody around you is going to own it, nor can you teach it, because you don't own it. I don't want to be a false teacher. I don't want to be a false teacher. That's, That's all you keep like, thinking. Oh, oh my, my gosh, I'm a false teacher. I don't want to be a false teacher. <laughs> that was the desired effect. Mm -hmm. That was the desired effect, I think, of this lesson for us to step back and go, mm -hmm. Lord, guard the words that come out of my mouth, because mm -hmm. I don't want faults, because it sounds so good, and I want to encourage, but I don't want to lie. There's, there, ooh, there's a fine line. There's, ooh, there's a fine line. People will not endure sound doctrine and will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and turn aside myths. So that, that's, that's it. I don't need to add to that. They entice. They entice. That's an interesting word, too. This is interesting, um, in verses 19 and 20, they promise freedom. Do you feel like you don't have freedom? Do you feel like you're enslaved? Do you know people that feel like they're enslaved? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. So freedom from what? Mm -hmm. Freedom for their desires to do what they want to do. There we go. Because that's freedom, it's being able to do whatever I want to do. Right? What does is, what is Romans talk about, the, uh, the Gnostics and the antinomians? Okay? Gnostics, people know. But only certain people are allowed to know because they're so smart. And they're the only ones that can know. And then you have the antinomians where grace, grace, grace. Sin, sin, sin. Because there's always grace, grace, grace. There's your freedom. How do you know that can't be? Because there is grace, grace, grace for all that sin, sin, sin. But you don't want to keep doing the sin, sin, sin if you truly... Um, There's the solid doctrine right there. But the other thing really tickled my ear because I thought, oh, that's great. That's not true. Part of it's true, but not all of it's true. And you know, if you have freedom from boundaries, children feel chaotic. They right. have freedom yeah, that's true. And, and that's they, not safe. Right. And they don't feel safe. And they can depend on, this is going to come next, we have one of these times. And we're just big children. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 It's a <laughs> Think about this. They preach that, but that's exactly what they're overcome by. Mm -hmm. Okay? They had a full understanding of the Lord. They did. It's not that they didn't know. And through that knowledge, they escaped the defilements of the world. But what did they decide to do? Go back I want to go back. Does that mean they were saved and they lost their salvation? No. no. Can people make it say that? Yes. yes. They can make say if you hadn't been really in here for like three weeks by now, you could be convinced that you could lose your salvation because I think it kind of like says that. I started to write, I think so, and I was right. like, Cross that out. Oh, no, I oh, know this, this cannot be. <laughs> okay, this is a false doctrine. Thankfully, we have the Bible now that we can. This sounds like that, but then we can go to other pages and find other things that kind of back because up. Because scripture needs to confirm, confirm, confirm. It, it will never, that. never. That's uh, only the last 100, 150 years that we, we haven't had it like that before. Right, that I mean, they not, haven't preached that. Most people didn't have the Bible to go back to it. Most they had a pastor or somebody to teach it to them. But, no, you know, like the fact that we can use that. To I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm not lost. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Right? 
Yeah, I feel like I that don't sometimes. Lose my salvation, but I'm but I'm stuck. stuck. Mm -hmm. And I these mean, people, when they were entangled and they decided to go back again, were never saved. Romans will confirm that. Yes. Okay. Um, so here's your last two verses there. Why would it have been better? Because I have to ask that question. Because he says it would have been better for them not to have known epinosis, totally, fully known, the way of righteousness, than having known epinosis, fully known, to turn away from the Holy Commandment handed on to them. What have they been entrusted with? The Holy Commandment, the truth. They've been entrusted with that, and instead... I'm not doing that. And then they lead others with them. My older brother in high school, he was grew up Christian and everything and went off the deep end of high school and took a lot of people with him too. Like he got into really and he still screwed up, he's in that church now. But like he got into stuff and he was taking he was teaching other people with him and taking with him. And my mom told him one day, she's like, Look, because he was really sick when he was like a baby. And she's like, I almost wish that you had died then than to grow up and leave people astray. Like it hurt my mom Do you so see much how that deep she that is? that he had died as a baby than to grow up to be able to leave other people. Not only was he not saved, but he's leaving other people away from Christ. And that's what I think of that, like, you know, the tears my mom And there is the responsibility. Is, is, yes. you know, that's how God is with us. Think but about this. Okay. It's 11 of, I gotta go. Um, take them back to the Old Testament. Okay? They knew. And now God's going to require it of them. It makes them like Satan, who knew fully. He knows more fully than you do, because he sees it. Ephesians four thirty. I couldn't help but think about that. Grief and Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Second Peter one four. You have to again remember to keep it in context. They never partook of the divine nature, but they know how. And they can kind of walk the walk because they know the righteousness, but they never partook. They returned to living in their sinful nature, denying the master who offered true life. And you know if they deny the master, there's no way they're saved. There's no way. That's, that's being judgmental. No, actually, that's being loving, not wanting your soul to go to hell. Think about Think about that, and, and especially pray for these people that come into your life. Again, like the people that were sitting in front of me Friday night, I just had to pray for them. Lord, please let somebody come into their life that will speak truth to them and know this is not right. I know that you're seeking to fill that void, but only God can fill that void. And you know that void isn't filled, is it? It's still not there. there. I was friends with them again. Growing up, growing up, like in high school and stuff, and if you really just know them all enough to talk to them, they're hurting, and they they will I mean, they won't admit it to most people because they want to, you know.